Hey everyone, Jack Byer here for NASA Space Flight. Welcome to our first Boca Chica weekly update. With so much going on at SpaceX's South Texas facilities, we wanted a better way for everyone to keep track of what's going on with Starship progress. So we decided to do these weekly update videos in addition to our daily videos. Let us know what you think in the comments, if you have any suggestions, and of course, thanks as always to Mary, AKA Boca Chica Gal, for making all of this possible. Without any further fuss, let's get into it. The massive Manitowoc 18,000 crane, aka Blue Zilla, came online and began building the new high bay, which will be used for stacking super heavy. Progress is going insanely fast compared to the mid bay, with large wall segments being pre built on the ground before being lifted into place. At this speed, we should see the high bay completed in no time. Next, Starship SN5, having passed the cryo pressure test, got a Raptor installed. Raptor SN27 to be exact. Work prepping the vehicle, its new engine, and the launch pad continued all week ahead of static fire testing. Currently expected no earlier than July 13th. Just like SN4, SN5 has been fitted with a mass simulator, aka nose cube, to better simulate actual flight dynamics. We're expecting a single engine configuration for static fire testing, and if all goes well, an eventual 150 meter hop. Since that single engine will be offset from the center of the vehicle, it will pretty much power slide off the pad, with Elon confirming that one engine flight will look, quote, a little odd on Twitter. New sections for the next Starship prototype have been moved into the mid-bay for stacking alongside SN6. We don't know if this tankage is still using 301 stainless steel or if it's transitioned to 304L, and we don't know what serial number has been assigned to it. We've seen 304L written on rings in the past, so it might be possible to figure out which type this is in the future if we get some good close-ups of the ring. Someone left the nose cone machine on. Dang it, Earl! And there are still three nose cones sitting around outside the fabrication tents. It's hard to say whether they're Pathfinder nose cones meant to practice manufacturing techniques or actual flight hardware, or what type of steel they're made out of. The newer nose cones look to be further along in the design process, with RCS thrusters and a few ports installed. Several notable deliveries occurred this week. New tanks for the tank farm. Some unknown metal parts. A new food trailer. And several stainless steel rolls of unknown type. Mary spotted Zeus the Robodog up close for the first time, providing these photos and videos of it in the $29,000 inspection package it's fitted with. The inspection package includes a 360 degree camera, a PTZ camera with 30 times optical zoom, plus the ability to play and record audio via speakers and a microphone. Work at the launch site continues with progress on the super heavy launch pad. On the Starship suborbital launch mount and its ground support equipment. On the earthwork near the Starship landing pad. And mystery construction continued near the Starship pad. After hanging out at the launch site for weeks, SN3 was finally cut to pieces and hauled away. The pace around both sites at Boca Chica continues to impress ahead of the switch in focus to SN5's static fire test campaign. Hopefully, if static fire testing goes well, we will see it attempt a 150 meter hop. Thanks again to Mary for documenting all of these incredible events. Please feel free to provide your feedback on this new weekly roundup format in the comments. Remember to support the channel by subscribing, liking, and becoming a member to keep up with the daily videos from Boca Chica. Thanks for watching. Be excellent to each other.